Moments away from tip off between the Aggies and the Huskies. We go courtside to Evan Washburn. Evan. Well, Brad, as you know, the Hurley name is synonymous with college basketball in so many ways based off of what Dan and his brother Bobby did as players and now as coaches. But that foundation, make no mistake, was laid by their Hall of Fame dad and coach in high school in New Jersey, Bob Sr., who is in attendance tonight after having to miss the Big East tournament last week due to a medical procedure. And we spoke to Dan about it yesterday. He was emotional talking about his dad and the impact growing up in that coaching environment had on him. And guys, another cool layer to this storyline for Bob Sr. gets to watch one of his former players, R.J. Cole, who starred for him at St. Anthony High School in Jersey. What an unbelievable basketball family as we take a look the starting lineups for the Aggies the two guys they look forward to leadership Clayton Henry and Johnny McCants the two seniors RJ Cole and Adama Sanogo both first team all Big East the only Big East team to have two guys on the starting five Dan Hurley fourth year 12th year overall as a head coach and on the other side Chris Jantz in his fifth season as the head coach of the Aggies from Las Cruces New Mexico. The WAC champs, they've been the regular season WAC champions for the last five years. And there's who they are, including Pistol Pete, who was twirling his six guns out here to show off for <laughs> Brendan Haywood right before the tip. Jeffrey Clark, William Henderson, DJ Nelson, the officials, and we're underway. See where the Aggies go to first to start this game off. Might not be a bad time to find Mr. Allen. See if he can kick the party off. There he is on the dribble. Teddy Allen all the way inside trying to draw the foul from Jackson. Doesn't get it or the bucket. Jackson comes back the other way. And that's how UConn plays. They're physical. They're going to force the referees to blow, the, blow their whistles. And they did for the first time. It's Sonogo in the paint with a foul. going to be on Will McNair the big guy for New Mexico State 6'10 277 pounder they're going to have to be careful not to get him in foul trouble great now right there that, that ball was supposed to go to Cole but man New Mexico is all over that Tyrese Martin long step off the window too hard and Teddy Allen with the rebound. Allen got a nice pick out high and then maybe got away with an offensive foul, but he works inside and missed in close. And that's two, two layups missed for Allen. Jackson gives it back. Sonogo, a little runner. Neither team can find it right now, early. Jabari Rice. Allen wants to lob it in to Johnny McCants. McCants squares up, now backs in. Try to go baseline. He'll have to give it up. Five on the shot clock. Fadeaway jumper from the elbow is good. Clayton Henry. And Henry likes it. Goes back down the court, shaking his head, yelling at the bench, getting his guys into it. Guarded by Allen. Mexico State, I've been impressed with how they've come out defensively. Cole, the kick out. Here's an open look for three off the mark from Whaley. And Jabari Rice has a look over to the coach. And this UConn team, you like how they play on the defensive end. You, you love how they consistently compete as they get the block shot right there. We talked mm -hmm. about their. Shot blocking ability in their rebounding. There's a good example. That's the 68th block of the year by Whaley. Yeah, they really protect. They really protect the paint quite well. The problem for them is on the other end, where they they really sometimes just struggle to score and find buckets. Dan Hurley told us yesterday, offensive rebound has saved us, or we maybe wouldn't be scoring 75 points a game. Allen might have gotten away with an elbow. Take that up. Out to the baseline. Rice takes a back step. Misses a three. Jackson will clear it. Nice one-handed bounce pass. 
They bring it back out to him. Three is off the mark. Andre Jackson hoisting threes is probably not the way UConn wants to play offense. Yeah, that, that's not his strength. And he has a little bit of a, a, a weird shot, kind of shoots it from his chest. <laughs> now so, you're being kind. Well, I, I, I listen. <laughs> I gotta do my job, but I don't want to disrespect anybody. I hear you. I'm just saying. Rice. Neither team can find Man. the basket. I would call this a rock fight, but that'd be disrespectful <laughs> rock fights. <laughs> Allen slashes, fadeaway jumper, in and out. So no go the rebound. That's the guy they need to get the ball to. RJ Cole's the guy that they need to get the ball to. The transfer from Howard had 1,500 points as we see a bucket right there from UConn. The transfer from Howard had 1,500 points before he stepped on the UConn campus. So if anybody's going to score the ball for UConn, it's going to be Mr. Cole. So Isaiah Whaley ties things at two. Rice around an Allen screen. Aggies. Work the perimeter. Ten on the shot clock. Nice defensive job. Rice is going to have to get it up in a hurry here. And, it, and missed U everything. This UConn defense is stifling. I know they struggle to. I know they struggle offensively, but defensively they're as good as it gets. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever. Like the goats. Is this fact checked? Debate the goatness. Yukon band. Let's strike up the band. It's two to two. <laughs> Take a look at our tournament summary. At least one 12 seed over a number five seed in 12 of the last 14 tournaments, including our game earlier today as Richmond picked off Iowa. Mountain West 0 and 1 in first four and 0 and 2 in round two. Here it's the whack against the Big East. Man, both teams struggling offensively. This is, look at the stat sheet, Brad. It's a, it's a very weird stat sheet. We're, we're, rarely do you get to the first dead ball timeout. Hey, it was about, before we got our first dead ball timeout on the first game today with uh, South Dakota State and company, I think we had about 40 points. Exactly. Rarely do you get to the first time out and you look at the stat sheet and see zero points in the paint, zero second chance points, <laughs> zero fast break points, and zero bench points. That's Just goes to tell you this, not a lot of points being scored. Yeah, Coke Zero is a lot better than those zeros, I'll yes. tell you that much. So you're trying to get some free product. <laughs> and double dribble. UConn turns it over. At this point, with the way UConn's playing from an offensive standpoint, they're going to need to start getting the ball on R.J. Cole's hands on purpose. Get him some dribble handoffs, run some middle ball screens, but they're going to have to make, let him make the decisions. He's one of only two Big East players with 500 points and 100 assists this year. So let that guy be the decision maker for this squad, because right now, offensively, it's looking a little rough. But the good thing for UConn is, even though their offense isn't here, their defense always shows up. Cole showing that against Rice right now. Low post feed. In low, the hook shot won't go for McNair. Kept alive by Allen. Out to Johnny McCants. Fresh chance for the Aggies. Rice draws a double team. And now six on the shot clock. Rice got it from three. There we go. Now we got a little bit of offense going there. Look good, too. Rice from right behind the screen. Shot it with confidence. 54 three-pointer hit for Jabari Rice this year. He's only a 33% three-point shooter, so they'll definitely take that. Cole in the lane with the left hand. That, that's the guy. It's, it, it starts and ends with him. If they're going to get something done in the half court, it starts and, end with, it starts and ends with R.J. Cole. Allen, and he's fouled by Andre Jackson. Jackson picks up his first for complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Oh. 
Allen double teamed. They almost tie him up. I see UConn's making a concerted effort to show Allen some attention to that pick and roll. They sure are. Quick trap right there. Oh, drive and Whaley swatted that one out of there. Whaley with the excellent block from the weak side. Cole had to pick up his dribble. Whaley on the outside. Got it. His second jumper. Isaiah Whaley gives UConn the lead. Yet the score had two quick looks on the inside earlier in the game. Now from the outside, he's short on a three. And a whistle and a foul on the baseline. And you see Welly coming right over from the weak side, understanding the assignment. Closes down the lane the way UConn does routinely, and then rewarded on the other end. Do, do some good things on the defensive end, they'll find you offensively. Nice mid range jumper. Mario McKinley to inbound. He's going to reset the clock here. Think they're going to put a second back on. There it is. Okay. Who knows? That might be really valuable later. You never know. <laughs> Sometimes little things are big things. Allen trying to back his way in. They'll have to move it back out on top. Again, they're going to get late in the shot clock. Allen on a runner off the mark. And then a foul battling for the rebound. Going to be on the Aggies. Clayton Henry. Allen out was 19 points per game, but he's really been struggling early on. UConn showing the extra attention to him. And Henry right there with the foul on Sonogo. Jalen Gaffney now running the point for UConn. Guarded by Rice. Cole quick with a crossover dribble. Finds an open three. In and out. Sonogo trying to keep it alive. Out of bounds to New Mexico State. And Sonogo has to understand when he sets that screen and roll for, for, for Cole, he has to get out of there. He's setting the screen and then he's just standing and he's not getting out of there quickly. Sometimes you have to get in there, get contact, then slip to the basket. That'll create a shot for yourself or somebody on the weak side. McCants works against Sonogo and thinks better of it. Backs it out to Rice. And stolen away. This you by Cole. has been stifling. Cole to Gaffney, the two guards run together. And McCants rips down the rebound as if to say, OK, I didn't do it on the other end, but I did it on the rebound. And here's Sonogo with okay. an overplay. That's Open court. Oh, the big fella getting out of transition, but look at McCants hustling back for the block. Twice now, McCants gets down court and comes up with a defensive gem right there. This might not be the most aesthetically pleasing game in the world from an offensive standpoint, but defensively and hustle-wise, both of these teams are getting after it. We said they were going to play defense. We didn't know it was going to be quite this rugged. Don't miss the explosive new season of Snowpiercer. Set your DVR and catch new episodes Mondays at 9 on TNT or binge episodes anytime on demand and on the TNT app. Dan Hurley talked with Evan Washburn during the timeout. Well, Coach, in this style of game, with the way they're playing defense, what's the best way to attack it? Yeah, we got to score those transition baskets. In a game where you know points are going to be at a premium, and there's a lot of physical defenders and rebounders and athletes on the court, got to convert those transitions. Thanks for the time. Gotcha. Dan told us yesterday, one thing we really struggle with is finishing in the paint. And with the breakaway like they had, despite great hustle by McCants to get down and get a piece of that ball, maybe should have been a foul call. But yeah, they got to finish those because they're 
offensively challenged to be sure and they play great defense and rebound well but whenever you can get a a breakaway like that or easy bucket you got to hit them. Yeah when your team has struggled to score when you get out in transition you have to take advantage of those opportunities or when you get the offensive rebounds you have to be able to put them back in because you understand in the half court you're not the most explosive team in the world. You don't this UConn team doesn't hang their head on offense they're hanging on defense but offensively they still have to make the most of the opportunities. They get an open three there and they knock it down from Pollock. And maybe that's what this team needs to get jump started. Some buckets from Pollock. See if the Aggies can have an answer. Teddy Allen so far is 0 for 6 on the floor. And he's their main man at over 19 a game. Here he is on the dribble. Crossover thought about a shot gets it over on the extra pass and it was a good extra pass and the three goes for peak. That's a smart play by Allen right there. He doesn't have it going right now still trying to be aggressive but at the same time he's not forcing the action. Give me some great hustle defensively as he's denying the passing lines. That three goes as well. That's Polly back, back to back triples. That's what I was about to say. Back to back three to Polly. That's his 50th of the year. And two in a row. <laughs> Allen with Jackson on him. Jackson, a great defender. Disruptive force defensively. Allen took the shot over him though and finally got one to drop. That's a tough, tough, tough basket right there by Allen. Got right to the mid post, pulled up over Jackson. Jackson played great defense right there, just yeah, better yeah. offense. Polly, heat check. Nope, not that time. Allen pulls it off the backside, looking to run a little bit with McKinney. Allen wants it again. And, that, and that's the thing, when you're a great scorer, when you see that ball go through the rim one time, you, you definitely want the next possession. Turn around baseline. Oh, that was tough. Ooh. Extremely tough, and the arc on the shot was so pretty. Tied at 12. Nicknamed Teddy Buckets. I can see why now, right? Last two, last two <laughs> possessions, he showed us why. Jackson drives. Looking to go up and flush one down, and instead is fouled by Mike Peake. See Allen right here getting his body into Martin just slightly, just enough to get him off balance. We can fade away to that baseline. It's about as tough a shot as you can make. And here's a foul on the other end as Jackson went airborne and Mike Peake hits him to send him to the free throw line for two. And rips the first one, his first points. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Andre Jackson, Dan Hurley says he might be the most athletic guy I've ever had at any level as far as just testing. Vertical jump, strength, speed, endurance. His shot's not very pretty, but he buried both of those. Averages just under seven points a game, but he's freakish athletic, and he gives his team a two-point lead. Yeah, and, and only a sophomore, so you're hoping, you're hoping that the offense gets better. But you can't teach what he has. You can't teach the athleticism. You can't teach the dog that will. There's a reason why he, they think he's one of their best defenders, because he loves to go out there and defend yep. and lock up. Having a guy that's athletic with that type of defensive pride, that's a rarity. Rice, five to shoot. Fade away, jumper is short. Ladogo with a rebound. Here's Jackson being athletic, pushing it in transition. Cole, in some traffic trips, got it away to Jackson and over to Whaley. Nicely timed jump on the rebound by McKinney. Allen's in his last couple. Three ball. Got uh oh. Uh oh. 
Now he's starting to feel good. Now he's into a rhythm. Missed a couple of layups early on in the game. Kind of threw him off for a little bit, but he's right back. And that's what great scorers do. They can miss a couple of shots, but they have a short conscience. Very short memory. The Aggies back in front by one. We're under seven and a half in the first half. Tyrese Martin turnaround jumper from the free throw line won't drop. Cleared out of there by Will McNair. And even though Martin missed that last shot, he's had three very good games leading up to this 19, 17, and 19 for UConn. So we talk about them needing to score some points. Maybe he can be a guy that can pick it up. Allen scored the last seven for New Mexico State. Let's see if he gets a touch this trip. Way out near midcourt, he'll get it. And a push pass, trying to get it into the big fella McNair. Stolen away, ahead to Jackson. Look out! Let's everybody go by, and it's his first field goal. McKinney guarded close by R.J. Cole. Cole is all in his shirt, isn't he? Sure is. You can tell him what he ate for lunch today <laughs> and breakfast. Allen's bumped by Jackson. And that's going to be two on Andre Jackson. Teddy Buckets getting it done from deep. Teddy Allen for three. And, and Jackson, the breakaway for the Huskies. Close game. Aggies down one. Coach Jans with Evan a moment ago. Coach, as you look at the way this game started on both ends, what's going to be required to get a lead and sustain it? We got to make some shots. Um, we're a little stagnant offensively. I'm really impressed with our defense thus far and the rebounding. They're a very physical team. And thus far, I like our effort. How do you feel about what Teddy was able to do to get going? I mean, he, he can go on runs. You know, he can make some bad shots. He takes some bad shots. But he can go on runs. And uh, we're used to him playing that way. Coach, thank you. Thanks. Well, that was the case, Brendan, early in the ball game, as you said, a couple of missed snowbirds inside for Teddy Allen, but he got warmed up. And they're going to need him, every yeah. one of them. Yeah, they're definitely going to need Teddy Allen to get hot. He's one of the few guys on this Texas A&M team that can get his own shot. So he's going to have to be aggressive, no matter if he misses a couple or not. Stay aggressive at all times. They're going to need him to have a big game. Teddy Allen, 19 point a game score for New Mexico State. They trail by one. There was a time during one of the timeouts where you looked at me and said I don't think either team's going to get to 20 by halftime. I think we got a good shot at it now. Yeah we do. And Jabari Rice just helped the cause. His second three. Aggies back in front by two. Nice entry pass. Sonogo missed the hook. And we're going to have an over the back. Foul on a cook a cook. That's a great box out by McCann. So as you see Rice right here shooting the three. RJ Cole right there made a defensive mistake. He shot the high side on the screen and got caught a little bit. And that's how Rice was able to get that wide open. You generally like to chase guys around the screen. You take that high side, you're taking a big time chance. John McCann's way out on top. Trying to get it back to him. Backs in the paint and goes around a cook a cook. That's goaltending. And that's goaltending on a cook a cook. So we get a foul on one end and a goaltending on the other end. Give the basket to Johnny McCants. So that matches. That is the biggest lead for New Mexico State. Up four. Martin going right here. Martin kicks it back outside. I'm not sure that was the plan, but they're going to take it. A cook, a cook with a three. Great unselfish play by Martin. Gets down the lane, finds his teammate in the corner. Well, they're going to tell me that's a two, not a three.
Nair out to McCants. Back on top five to shoot. Jabari Rice, the hook pass over. McCants has got to get rid of it. And I don't think he did. He didn't. Shot clock violation against the Aggies. And you see, and you see why they, they depend on Teddy Allen so much. Allen didn't really touch the ball that possession. And look how disjointed that possession right. looked. So, well, like I said, whether he's making shots or not, Allen has to be involved almost at all times because most of the rest of the guys on the team, they don't really get shots that well on the run. It's time for Sonogo to get going down there. He has a donut right now. Spin move to the baseline to get going. Oh, and that was pretty. First basket for Adama. Ties it at 20. Anytime you're playing against a defender that gets physical, that quick spin to the baseline can definitely oh, <laughs> set a defense back. And speaking of guys that set defense back, Teddy Allen with the runner off the glass. Showing us a full repertoire right now. He's not shy. No, he's not. Well, the defense is pushed way out near midcourt. Cole in traffic, and he's going to be bumped by Rice. New Mexico State by two. Sonoga, watch that drop step. Pretty. And then you have on the other end, Allen pretty as well. Off the glass, the bank's open. Scary hours. 341 remaining. Our game summary here in the first half. New Mexico State by two. They have warmed up to the tune of 41% from the floor. UConn had 40. Teddy Allen started off 0 for 6. But he's now four for ten. He's hit his last four, partner. Yeah, and listen, that one turnaround jumper really got him sparked. You said, guess what? He went right back to it. Here he gets to the floater. This guy doesn't lack for confidence. He understands the offense goes through me. My teammates, they're here to play defense, rebound, and support me. But at the end of the day, Teddy Allen knows if they're going to score baskets, he has to do the job. R.J. Cole missed in the paint the rebound to Rice. And now Allen with a pull-up long That's range. Foul. Yes. And he's going to the free throw line for three. And that almost went in. Frustrated defense out there right now as he hit the deck. He's got a big smile on his face as he walks back near midcourt to sort of regroup his thoughts. They say he Teddy Allen's a character. They say he's the type of guy that he lives for these moments. He likes when guys are physical. Likes when they talk a little bit of trash. And there's an obvious foul right there on the elbow by Martin. So now he's in double digits, and we've still got three and a half minutes to go in the first half. 87% free throw shooter. Puts his team up four. For the first time ever, the Stanley Cup playoffs are on TNT and TBS. You won't want to miss a minute. Watch starting on May 5th to see who will raise the cup. This guy has raised his game after a slow start. It rips off all three free throws. And it's a five point lead for New Mexico State. I love the resiliency by Teddy Young. But we always say they nickname him Teddy Buckets, and they got, you know, they have Teddy Bucket t-shirts as he gets the steal right there. And he gets fouled by Sonogo, who just grabbed him in the waistband. Yeah. They got, but they have the Teddy Bucket t-shirts going back. Back in Las Cruces? Yeah. That's good. I gotta get I gotta get a couple of those. Yeah, you you see him right here, known for his offense, but guess what? Turning it on defensively too. I'm not sure why Sonogo even grabbed his waist at that point. It wasn't a breakaway. They didn't have numbers. Frustration. But that means the world. When you're a great offensive player and your team knows it, when you come out there and you do the little things defensively to show that you care, that'll make guys want to play harder for yeah. you. Because they okay, we know you could just rest on defense, but you're not that type of guy. You're out here with us giving it everything you have. Let's see if RJ Cole can get something going. Drops it down low to Sonogo. He's going to draw a double team for sure. Back out to Cole. Open three. Nope. And kept alive by Adama. And he can't connect with the left hand. And Teddy Allen's got the rebound. He says, OK, calm down. I got this. And surprisingly, that's the first offensive rebound for UConn. Third best offensive rebounding team in the country. They've missed a lot of shots tonight. Normally, they make up for that. Oh, what a pass oh, by Rice. Great pass by, by Rice right there. 
They normally make up for their missing with offensive rebounds, but Texas Tech, I mean, Texas A&M has not allowed that. New Mexico State, you oh mean? Oh, my goodness. You I'm, just got the Aggies I thing got working. the Aggies mixed up. <laughs> they got third, it going, This too. is our third game. I'm struggling. Please, <laughs> please don't kill me on Twitter. Blame it on my mind, not my heart. Well, you got the Aggie part right. Seven-point lead, New Mexico State on the great look inside to a lock. All right, Adam, thanks. Oscar Shibwe, first team, All-American. Kentucky, the two seed. St. Peter's, a 15 seed. Here in the West, New Mexico State surprising UConn right now. Coming up, AT&T at the half scores and highlights in the latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Here is a splurge of scoring by the Aggies in Mexico State has given them the biggest lead so far in the half up seven Polly misses a three and we're going to foul on the inside battling for the rebound it's going to go against the Aggies and surprisingly for UConn with two minutes left in this game RJ Cole only has two points averages 16 points on the season so He's going to start calling his own number and get things going. It's another tough catch, and it wasn't a catch. It was a turnover. Yeah, that was a tough pass right there. The big fella couldn't get his hands wrapped around it. That ball just never quite made it up past. You, you never like to throw a, a bounce pass to your big fella that doesn't get back up past his knees. That's that one that's never made rule, it. That's just a rule of thumb. Under two minutes in the half. Teddy Allen. You see that look in his eye when he starts dribbling. <laughs> yeah, he wants, yeah, he wants the ISO. He doesn't want he doesn't want the screen because he knows there's a chance they might trap him. And he got a good pass though over on the baseline. And then the three goes for Johnny McCants. Only his 18th three of the year. It's a 10-0 run and a 10-point lead for New Mexico State. This last minute 13, UConn has to do something there. UConn is not a team that's built to come back from behind from big leagues because offensively they struggle so much. So no go this time. Got it off the pass from Cole. Adama's got four. Final minute of the half. Last time Teddy Allen created Looks by like, his penetration and his dish to the corner. Let's see what he does here. Looks like they're going old school, one four flat. One man at the top of the key, four guys along the baseline. Let's see what Allen can do. Fade away from the elbow. Oh my goodness. Why not? I'd call one four flat every time for that guy. That's how he's going to score it. Sometimes it's just that simple when you have a great player. Clear it out and everybody else get the heck out the way. Two of his toughest shots now. That one and also that turnaround on the baseline. He's given his team a 10 point lead as there's about a five second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. And if you're RJ Cole, you got to match Teddy Allen's energy. You're a score, you're a score within your own right. And a collision in the paint. I think this one's going to be on McCants. You see right here, Allen just gets right to his spot. Creates great separation with the step back right there. Really impressed with his skill set. That was a lock. Again, that's his second, not on McCants. So ten seconds remaining in the half. It's going to be an Aggie lead no matter what happens here. If they get a decent shot, Cole gets double teamed. He's in trouble. They might not get a shot off. Martin just in time they do but they missed it. Well New Mexico State has got to be feeling really good. Dan Hurley's not feeling so good. A lack of offense that's been a problem all year long and it's a problem again and then that guy number zero Teddy Buckets Allen is putting on a show for us in the first half. He hit his last five field goals. And he lays the way as we go to heaven. Well, Coach, when Teddy Allen gets hot like that, how does it change what you can do offensively? Run sets for him. <laughs> Open up the court. What I love is he's a willing passer. He understands how people play him, and he's been unselfish with the ball almost to a fall a couple times. You know what 
stands on the other side there in this second half. What's going to be the difference in the final 20 minutes? Uh, we're so far away from thinking about that. We got a long way to go. They got a lot of pride. They're going to come out and punch us in the mouth, and we're going to have to withstand that for sure. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. So New Mexico State surprising everybody. A 32-point first half up by 10. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. New Mexico State Aggies by 10 as we take a look at the Dove Men Care Plus first half stats. They warmed up to 46 percent did the Aggies of New Mexico State UConn still a measly 35 percent from the floor. They're getting out shot Brennan. They're getting out rebounded. Everything is going New Mexico State's way. Now you kind of had a four point lead at 12 to 8 and then Teddy Allen went to work. Yes Teddy Allen started off a little bit cold. Yep. But guess what. He stuck with it and after that man oh man did he catch fire as you see right here with this first play missed this is the second layup that he missed it looked like it wasn't going to be his night but he stuck with it got hot next thing you know he was hitting shots from all over the court twos threes step backs turnaround Jays anything any way you want it he had an answer for you he hit their last five field goals and three free throws check in with Evan spoke to Dan Hurley guys he was most disappointed that they were out tough as he put it on the offensive glass that's something they really hang their hat on as for defending Tenny Allen he felt like Andre Jackson did a good job early remember he gets in foul trouble he has three to play with here in the second half and that's going to be their plan offensively he said we're not going to do anything if we can't get our knowns going RJ Sonogo and Tyrese guys combined for six points in that first half yeah and RJ Cole had two and Tyrese Martin had none. They averaged 30 between them. So somebody's got to get hot yeah, the, for the Huskies. The UConn backcourt was surprisingly quiet in the first half. They've done a good job on Cole defensively. Rice on him right now. Sonogo on a runner. That's got nice. Him. That's nice. Big fella saw nobody was on him. Went right down the lane. Got right to his floor. Good way to start the half. Cole right on Jabari Rice as he knocks it away over in front of us. Now it's time to close the gap presented by Aflac. Now we're going to close the gap. Attack the boards. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. What you want to do when you want to close when you want to attack the boards, if you're if you're UConn, and then at the same time you got to get your backboard going. Let's see how Teddy Allen. Starts off the second half. A drop pass down low, the kick out. McCants gave up a three. They hook it over. Allen on the baseline. They got fouled. The knee wow. ball went in. He's going, where's the foul? But he drills the three. He's hit the last six field goals for the Aggies. I'm not sure why they stopped the possession right there. But Allen definitely looked like he there was some contact right here. McCants with a great pass. Oh yeah. I don't know. It's a Teddy Allen sandwich, but no call. Think about Teddy Allen. He's not going to let that stop. He, no. he, yeah, he hit that shot. He you know he got fouled, but guess what? He's going to play through it, and he's going to keep going. He's a very confident kid. He's got 17 points. Thought about a three. Feeds the post. So no go. Puts it back and walk on Whaley. I keep watching UConn play and I keep watching them offensively and it looks disjointed. And I keep sitting here waiting for that backcourt. When is RJ Cole going to say, hey, it's my time? When is Tyrese Martin going to step up and, and get in the scores column? You better not wait too long. Yeah. We watched the, we watched the 12 knock off a of five earlier in this building. Yep. Teddy Allen has the last 16 points. Somebody else getting in the act? Yes, they are. Clayton Henry does. All of a sudden, a 14 point lead for the Aggies. Dan Hurley, only less than two minutes into the half, has seen enough of this. Timeout. 
New Mexico State. Can somebody else get in the act on offense? Clayton Henry says, yes, I can. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code to download right now. I'll tell you what, the Aggies in New Mexico State are downloading right now. They are up 14. And 7 out of 10 from three-point land. They were ranked 242nd in the country. And tonight, they're hitting them when they need them on the biggest stage. Round one of the West Region here in Buffalo. And they've got the number five seed Yukon Huskies on the ropes with 18-12 remaining second half. And a 14-point lead isn't insurmountable. And normally I wouldn't say this, but for UConn, it's go time right now. 18 minutes on the clock, you say that that's a little bit early. You talk about a sense of urgency. They have to make a move right now. Well, UConn doesn't score the ball well. They right. can't afford for this thing to get to 20 points or 22 points. They do not have the type of offense that can come back. They have to make a push right now. Whether it's R.J. Cole, Tyrese Martin, one of these guys in his backcourt has to say not tonight and get this team back into it and cut this lead under 10. There's Cole, and there's part of it, three. They can't get it back all at once, but incrementally get it down to the 16 mark, the 12 mark, and just keep chipping away. And that three-pointer helps big time. If you get to the next time out, you're under 10 points. It's a seven, eight-point lead for New Mexico State. You're right where you want to be. Then you grind it down again. Play from timeout to timeout, but make sure that your money makers are getting the ball and they're making the plays. Can'ts lost it out of bounds. Turnover Aggies. They haven't had a lot. That's their sixth of the night. And on the flip side, if you're the Aggies, you can't take your foot off the gas. As you see right here, a little bit of a careless pass. I saw the Aggies at the last time out staring at the crowd, wolfing, talking to their fan base. Better stay focused. Exactly. This isn't the time. This UConn team has pride. They're not going to go away. Whaley, three-pointer. Got it. Back-to-back -back triples by the Huskies. And just like that, they're right back in. Already have it down to single digits. And it's just a minute after the timeout by Hurley. Let's see if Teddy Allen gets a touch. If he doesn't, there's something wrong with New Mexico State. There he has it now, but working against Jackson, as Evan was talking about, he's going to drive all the way in and score it anyway. Doesn't matter who's guarding him. Jackson, Cole, Martin. Teddy Allen has it going right now. He's got 19. That's his average. We got a long way to go, and he's going to get a lot more touches before we're done. Cole, the layup. Might have been partially blocked. A little scoop shot with the left hand, and it came up short. You see Jackson trying to play some defense. Sorry, Mr. Jackson, but Teddy Allen's for real. He was able to score that one. Another reach by Jackson. Allen has him on his hip again. Great defense by Sonoga. And now the outlet to Cole will score on the layup. So RJ Cole, five points here in the last couple minutes. Allen has hit his last seven field goals until now. And that race. Martin comes out of there with the board and drives it all the way in and draws a foul. And will be headed to the free throw line, courtesy of foul on Will McNair. Eight point game, 15 and a half to go. Will McNair picked up that foul to send the Huskies to the free throw line. Each team has only been to the line once as Teddy Allen hit his three free throws and Andre Jackson hit the two that he took. So it hasn't been a free throw shooting contest by any stretch of the imagination so far tonight. And right now Tyrese Martin going there. The senior out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, 69 percent free throw shooter has not scored in the game and he averages. Almost 14 per ball game. And he's still looking for his first point. 
Watch CBS Sports HQ for the best coverage of the big dance. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more on the free 24 7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Martin second got it. He's in the score column and he cuts the lead to seven. Some full court pressure now from UConn. They get it in at Jabari Rice and drops it back off to Clayton Henry. Uh, and I like it. The game's not going your way. Pick up full court, change, change the pace of the game a little bit. Maybe they'll turn it over, make a sloppy pass, but give yourself a chance. McCants thought about trying to get it into McNair, but instead to Teddy Allen, which is probably a good thing. That one clanged off the side of the rim, though. Sonogo with the rebound. He's going to try to bring it down himself. Smart decision. Double teamed and fouled. Sonogo wanted to go to the basket, but he saw that Allen was lining him up to take a charge. Made the very smart decision to pull that out right there. Allen picks up his first foul. Second team foul. Whaley packs it inside of Sonogo, who works baseline, runs into McNair and company, and a tie up. It's getting physical in there. It's getting a little chippy. And that's going to get it back in the hands of the Aggies on the possession arrow. And I love that Sonogo is trying to establish a physical presence inside. But in that instance, he has to go a little bit quicker. They're sagging down. They're not really giving him a lot of space inside. So when he catches it, get right to your jump hooks. Don't play around with it. Allen with Jackson on him. Got around Jackson all the way. He's missed his last two shots now after hitting so many in a row. RJ Cole. Jackson pushes it over. Open three is a little too strong. And it's going to be a foul underneath as Tyrese Martin had his hands on it and took one from Henry in the breadbasket. Aggies go to their bench and bring in McKinney. Mario McKinney will come in and Clayton Henry gets a breather. Chance for the Huskies to cut it to five or more. Should say five or less. That pass. Aggies got numbers if they push it. UConn's game. Way to hustle back. Took away that transition. Rice takes a three, clangs off the front of the iron. Cole penetrates with the left hand off the window. There we go. That's what I've been asking for. Be aggressive. 11 2 run in the last four minutes for UConn. They're back to within five. And with that, first Jans is going to take a timeout. Dan Early and his Huskies fired up right now as they've cut into that lead 40 35. Download the March Madness live app on your LG OLED TV today. It's not just OLED, it's LG OLED. Well, an 11 5 push here by the Huskies. They trailed by 14 not that long ago. Actually, the timeout came with a couple minutes gone in the half by Dan Hurley, and it has propelled his team back in the thick of this thing with 13 and a half to go. Underneath, boy, nice play. Come out of the timeout. Good execution by Texas a &M right there. Will McNair's first basket. Big man to big man on that pass and bucket. And that, that you can always tell when you have a really good coaching staff when you come out of a timeout and it leads directly to an easy bucket for their team. Cole tried to leave it for Jackson. He saved it, but he saved it right back into McNair. And we're going to have a foul on the Huskies on Tyler Polly. Mr. 
Jabari Rice way out on top. Looking for a pick from McCants and the switch off by Whaley and Whaley with a cheap foul. That's back to back. That's back to back chippies for UConn. One on Polly and one on Whaley. So UConn, UConn is fine with that because they want to set the tempo. Everything about UConn is be physical, be overly aggressive. Those are the type of mistakes that Coach Hurley is not going to have a problem with at all. He wants his bigs at the level, showing out, hedging on screens and rolls. Deterring the dribble from turning the corner. Fighting for every inch in the post. Those are the things that their program is built on. Nice defense. Great defense by Sonogo right there. And then the foul. So that gives it back to the Huskies. As Johnny McCants picks up the personal. McCants tried to ISO against Sonogo, and man, it was like he ran into a brick wall. <laughs> Sonogo hasn't missed any days in the weight room. No, I'll hasn't. tell you that. <laughs> no days off is his for real for that young man. Jackson gets it into Sonogo, and he scores. You got a flop warning? Yeah, might be. I'm not sure that's a that's a flop. I mean, if you want to say it's a play on, I'm fine with that. But that definitely didn't look like a flop to me. So that's a technical because it was the second time they warned him apparently. But the first flop warning was on Allen on the play that we both thought he got fouled in the corner. Yeah. If if you tell me it's a play on, I'm fine with it. Me too. But a guy takes his shoulder right square in the middle of his chest, don't tell me he flopped. <laughs> well, it's a four point game. That's the most important part of it. We approach the 12 minute mark. Jabari Rice, straightaway three. Got it. All his field goals outside the arc for his nine points. And that was a good answer after the score on the other end. And McCants with a hand check foul on Sonogo. And he's getting in some foul trouble right at the 12 minute mark. That's four on McCants. Our game summary both teams have warmed up a little bit. Teddy Allen leads all scores with 19. RJ Cole, seven of his nine have come in this half. UConn now taking over the paint a little bit with 16 points. As we've got one more game yet to come, and here comes the Razorbacks of Arkansas. They'll take on the Catamounts of Vermont. Vermont in our uh, nightcap tonight. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. Well, guys, you could sense the tension in that Aggie huddle. There's some frustration with that flop call, but also, guys, they're pleading with the, the players to just pick up the intensity defensively. In one area where they had the edge in the first half, they can sense slipping away. Offensive rebounds. UConn's been all over the glass in this second half. Good point, MCW. Moving around the perimeter. Got a baseline three. And Teddy Allen. Nope, it's not going to be on Allen. McKinney, I guess, is the guy that picked up the foul. And once again, he got that foul. Boston out to no go. Who's Trying to do work on the offensive glass, and that's what UConn does. They miss a lot of shots, but they rebound a lot of their misses. They're going to put a lot of pressure on you as we see RJ Cole checking back into the game. Gaffney goes out. And I was calling for Cole at halftime. He's really stepped up. Only two points at halftime, has nine points now. I really like what he gave us in the second half. Oh, I love that by pass Jackson. right there. Oh. Sonogo missed in close. Love the pass by Jackson. Sonogo just got to squeeze it and finish. Take your time. No need to rush. 11 and a half to play. Seven point ball game. Allen's been a little bit quiet, but still 19 on the night, which is on his average. Now he's going to work up off the window. Can't get it to go. Kept alive by McKinney. And then lost it, had it knocked away, though, by RJ Cole. Adama Sonogo would like to have this one back. Yeah, Jackson did a great job finding Sonogo, cut underneath the basket. 
Just rushed it just a little bit, missed the left hand layup right there. And like we talked about in the first half, when you're a team that doesn't score the ball well, you can't afford to miss those layups. Right. You got to make sure you get all of the easy ones. Rice, the extra kick, oh. and a finish. Now that's how you finish. Big Will McNair. McNair throwing it down. Big Will doing a Big Willie style out there. That was a nice feed inside. Gets the lead back to nine. RJ Cole working against McKinney. And McKinney had him in a straight jacket on that possession. He was five going to shoot. Any fakes. Cole's going to have to take it with the right hand, and he got fouled right at the shot clock expiration. Nifty dish by Rice. Oh, yeah. Rice driving down the lane. Finds McNair cutting right to the basket, and the big fella throwing it down with authority. That's 280 pounds of throwing it down. It's a man's jam right there, Brad. It sure was. RJ Cole going to the free throw line. His first trip to the stripe. First team all Big East performer, great free throw shooter. And as Brendan said, he's put together a nice offensive second half. And that's what you have to do when, you, when your team depends on you, when the team's lead the score. If you don't play well in the first half, that's fine. Don't dwell on it. You have to be able to bounce back, and that's what he's done so far. That puts him over 2,300 career points between Howard and Connecticut. That ball was tipped, but picked out by Jamari Rice. And a foul on Polly as he was trying to stay with Allen. UConn right there, you saw him with the, with the full court press. Multiple traps. They're trying, trying to speed the Aggies up a little bit, see if they can get a couple easy ones, get up some turnovers, get out in transition. Coach Hurley understands the situation and where his team is from an offensive standpoint, so that's great coaching by Coach Hurley trying to generate some offense with his defense. Tyrese Martin all over Jabari Rice, who got the pass to McNair. His hook shots in and out. Allen kept it alive with a rebound, his fifth of the night. And no foul called there as Whaley got a piece of that shot. Polly pull up three. We're under 10 to go. 12 seeded Aggies of New Mexico State trying to pick off the fifth seeded. Huskies of UConn. And Jackson comes up with a steal. Great defense. That three-pointer does go for Tyrese Martin. Now we see this UConn backcourt stepping it up. You saw R.J. Cole. He stepped it up first. Now Martin getting into the action. This backcourt averages 30 points a game. Now we're seeing why. This is as close as it's been in quite a while. Allen guarded by Cole this time. Mismatch height wise there. Tries to back him down. Got the foul. Cole picks up the foul. You see right here, UConn turning excellent defense into good offense. Jackson gets the steal. Finds his partner, Martin, for the three point triple. And Martin has been struggling today. That's his first make from the field, one for five. but. When you're struggling like that, you see that first one go down. When you're a guy that can shoot the basketball, that, that takes a lot of pressure off you. Sometimes it's easy to hit two or three in a row right after that. Allen draws a crowd. Baseline jumper is short. He got his own miss. And they're showing Allen a lot of attention. They're double teaming him on pick and rolls. What the Aggies might need to do is start slipping some of those pick and rolls. We call those ghost screens where you come up there and you confuse the defense. You get up there like you're going to set a screen and you slip out of there. And sometimes two guys will guard the ball and one guy will be wide open. Oh, boy, McNair. A windy in here. Yeah. <laughs> Cole. 
Drops it off. Sonogo back out to Cole for three to cut it to one and does. Why not? Why not? And look at the look in his eye. He understands what time it is. He understood the assignment. His team was down at halftime big and they needed him to step up. He's their leading score. And now we're going to have a foul on Tyrese Martin. And look out now. A little bit chippy on that last foul as Allen hits the deck. I didn't see what happened. You will. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> right here. And that was about it. Just happened to be bent over Teddy Allen. He got wrapped up. Yeah, I didn't really... The officials are taking a look at this. It looked like more than what it really was. It looked like a, a good foul by Martin. Now we'll see if this is more of what they're looking at right there. We'll let them sort it out with 8.04 to play. We're still looking at that last foul on Tyrese Martin. We're going to bring in Gene Steratore. Our uh, officiating official, Gino, what'd you think about that? We're going to show the replay again. You know, yeah, a lot of times, guys, when players fall awkwardly and you have a look like that, they're going to look just to be on the safe side. But in my opinion, even though Martin's right arm is around Allen's back, the left hand is playing the basketball. He gets a good hand on ball to initially uh, kind of block that. It's definitely a foul, but in my opinion, that doesn't rise to the level of a flagrant one foul. I, I totally agree and I think what happened at the end was Allen said something to Martin and they were still while he's on the ground Martin didn't appreciate it and then his, his teammates got him out of there before anything could happen and so yeah. after that we, we saw we thought we saw a dust up but it really was just a, a, a common foul with a little bit of trash talk at the end and it was just a common foul and thanks Gene after the game before us it was no broken bones no foul so <laughs> that wasn't that big a deal I don't think and it wasn't in and the there, meantime there's still some people on Twitter from Iowa that are mad about that <laughs> so three point game for the drive by McKinney and now Cole has it rejected but he's fouled. This is a nice drive right here. Turning the corner, getting downhill, not settling for a jump shot. Love that possession. And now Cole going to the free throw line on a foul from McKinney on the other end. Tail of two halves for RJ Cole. Yep. RJ with the free throw. Three gourmet chefs compete to recreate and remix celebrities' favorite late night cravings. Check out Reimagine Fast Food with a side of culinary craziness on Fast Foodies. New episodes return March 24th on True TV. By the time we get off tonight, we might need to have a, have a fast food break. Absolutely. A late night craving, at least. Yep. Dinner on you? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know what we can find open in Buffalo at midnight, but Long we'll try you. to find something. If it's on you, we'll find a way. I've been known to have alligator arms. <laughs> that would be the only thing short on you. <laughs> One point game. Daddy Allen, deep three, way up on Oh, oh my shot. goodness. That thing, that was a rainbow three. It sure was. If the scoreboard would have been slightly off center, he might have hit it. I mean, you just tip your cap when somebody hits a shot like that. Utah played excellent defense. Allen just played better offense. Another three. This one off the mark. Pulled off the backside by Mario McKinney. And he'll bring it into the front court. And this guy's been fun to watch tonight. Yes, he has. Still on the dribble. Go to make a move with about 10 seconds. Here he goes. A little isolation working against Tyrese Martin. He'll try another high arching rainbow. This one rimmed out. And it's kept alive, though, momentarily at least, by Clayton Henry. And then he lost the handle. And I'm watching what UConn is doing in the screen and roll game. If Teddy Allen comes off, 
They're gonna put they're gonna try to commit two to the ball as we see. Aggies and the Huskies fighting for the rebound right there. Great call. That's definitely UConn's ball. Yep. They might have to make some adjustments to what they're doing with Allen. Because right now, the way he's scoring, that's a, that's a tough way to live. Maybe he might have to run him off some pin down screens. But like I said earlier, because they are trapping the screen and roll or, or committing two to Allen, run some ghost screens or some slip screens. Jackson, little rainbow runner. Andre Jackson. His second field goal and the lead down to two again. And Jackson's going to pick up a foul. That'll be three on Jackson. Six team foul on UConn, so the next foul, uh, Aggies are shooting free throws. Allen got Cole in his hip pocket right now. Look at Cole bump at 6 1, and Allen short. That was a four shot. It, it, it's so hard to make a living when you try to play one on one from the top of the key if you have a little bit of a travel right there. Oh, no, we have a foul. Thought we had a travel. It was a foul right there. It's going to be on Henry. But the degree of difficulty on Allen's shots right now have just been tremendous. The coaching staff's going to have to find a way to, to help ease some of that tension off of Allen on the offensive end. Well, I know he's hit every type of shot tonight, but when he was banging with R.J. Cole and Cole's 6 1, maybe, and Allen's about 6 6, it looked like he had something to prove on that shot, and he didn't prove anything other than it was sort of a bad shot. <laughs> At any rate, Tyrese Martin's going to the free throw line to try to tie this thing up. We haven't been tied this half. We were tied three times in the first half at various stages. And now we're tied in the second half with five minutes to play. McCann's cross courts it to Rice. Henry got a three. Love the play right there. Ball moved all around the court. It ran. It looked like a quick elevator screen, and Henry came to the top of the key and knocked it down. Cole almost lost that in the backcourt. That was off him. Regains possession. Four and a half in regulation. Got it over on the baseline. Out to him for three. And a foul underneath. That's going to send Sonogo to the free throw line. Yeah, and the reason we call this an elevator screen is because both the bigs come together and they, the doors close just like an elevator and they do not allow the defender to come through. And there's the foul on Big Will McNair. I'm trying to figure out what, what McNair's mad about. If you don't want him to call that foul, why even have a rule book? <laughs> Adama Sonogo to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Eight points on the night, make it nine. Sonogo trying to make it two from the line. Got them both. Ten for Adama. UConn's 12 out of 13 from the free throw line, and that's helped their cause. The big fella, pretty good free throw shooter. Shoots it right at about 70%. That's, that's pretty decent for a big man. Now what's the offensive option? Is it Teddy Allen or somebody else? Clayton Henry hit the last one from three-point range. Allen three to shoot. 
Oh my goodness. Is that a foul on Sonogo? Yes, Sonogo fouled him, and he did foul him too. He ran right through him. That was about 28 feet away from the basket on a shot that had no chance. Coach Hurley doesn't like it, but it was definitely a foul. I mean, yes. Ran right through the shooter. Wow, Adam. Wow. That could be a changer for your bracket in the East, could it? If that happens, I'm just throwing my bracket in the trash, okay? <laughs> you said you didn't fill a bracket out this, this time. Let's take this power pause presented by Powerade. Gives us a pause to send Teddy Allen to the free throw line. New Mexico State is three for three from the free throw line. It's because Teddy Allen is three for three from the free throw line. <laughs> One point game. Now, I know he's at the line and he got fouled at that, on that possession, but these last three minutes and 55 seconds, I think they have to find some easier shots for Teddy Allen. Help him out a little bit. Like I said, run him off a pin down screen. Let him come through on the elevator screen that they just ran for Henry a couple of possessions ago. Maybe a quick post up on the block. He has the turnaround jumper in his game. But they're going to have to do something different besides ISO simply at the top of the key because right now UConn is really locked in on that. This will give him 25 and three straight from the stripe after being fouled with one second left on that shot clock before the timeout. He's had a big night. We're under four minutes. And it's a four point game. Whaley way out on top. Gets it back to RJ Cole. And now Whaley and Cole play catch on the perimeter with four to shoot. Off balance shot by Cole, but it's kept alive by Sonogo on the backside. But he's going to have to give it up. And does to Martin. Martin's defenders slipped. They work it around and we're under 10 on the shot clock again as we approach three minutes. Cole on a runner. Got it to go. And I, I, that, that UConn possession looked a little disjointed, but at the end it looked good because they got a matchup that they want. If I'm Coach Early, I'm going right back to that. I'm going with RJ Cole, Anson Ogo in the pick and roll, and I'm going to make McNair Jr. play it. He's in a drop. And that's going to be advantage R.J. Cole. Allen Jackson on his hip. Goes baseline, runs out of territory, has to bring it back out to McCants. And now six on the shot clock for Rice. McCants tries to scoop it underneath. What a block. Blocked by Martin. What a block by Martin. And a shot clock violation. That's UConn basketball right there. Sonogo steps up for the charge. Martin right there for the block on the backside. Everything about that possession from a defensive standpoint was fundamentally sound. Huskies a chance to tie or lead this trip. We're down at 220. Here's that screen and roll at the top. They put McNair in it. This time he jumps out. Price on Cole. Or trying to stay with Cole. Jackson. Inside, found his free man in Whaley. Tie game. Another great pass by Jackson. Under two minutes, 58-58. Underneath, oh McNair my. missed in close. Oh, he blew the bunny. But it comes free to Henry, and now to Allen. Here it goes, three-pointer. Got it! Well, three's better than two anyway. Buckets. He's in the building. The three gives him a three point lead. Willie on the outside. Cole with 120 on the dribble. The drive, the right hand off the window. He's been sensational the second half. He has truly been sensational. The first half I was looking for him in the second half. I, I definitely found him. He has stepped up for this ball club. We're going to the wire with a minute to play in a one point game. New Mexico State. The 12th seed. UConn the five seed. 
We've already had a 12 over a five earlier today. Allen on a runner, and he's fouled. And, and UConn is bailing him out. They're playing great defense, but they're fouling Allen on tough shots. If he hits those shots, tip your cap and say, well say, done. And say, well done, exactly. Andre Jackson has been playing in virtually the entire night, and this is an impossible shot, it seems, anyway, although he's made some of the impossible look possible. But now he's going back to the free throw line, where he's six for six. Timeout, 52.4. You don't want to go away, I'm sure. There's the game reset. Everybody's shooting free throws. Teddy Allen's going back to the line where he has not missed six for six from the stripe. He walks that here way past midcourt. Thinking things over a little bit before stepping back in where he's going to shoot two. With less than a minute to go with this guy with the ball in his hand at the free throw line seems like an automatic. I hate to jinx him but. Tell me you didn't They've got to find Brad, some other you, way to stop Brad, him. Tell me you didn't just do that to me. <laughs> I don't know the way he's been shooting tonight. I think he's probably all right without my help. It was, close one like that. It was this close to the announcer's jinx. <laughs> this will give him 30 if he hits it. And a more important a three point lead. And it's been a tough 30 too. He got hasn't him. got many good looks or easy shots. He's had to get it out the mud. One possession game. Under 50 seconds. Jackson hands it off to R.J. Cole. Cole with Jamari Rice on him. You don't need a three right here. You still have enough time to get a two and play defense. And a double team on Cole and an overplay by Allen. He comes up with a defensive jam on top of his offense. We've been talking about his defense. He goes all the way. Oh, oh my. Cole's and one. Oh, my. And he's flexing on him. He's flexing for the crowd. The New Mexico State faithful are going crazy in this building. Teddy Allen putting on a show and a chance for another three point play after this defensive play gives it back to the Aggies and then he takes it coast to coast. Now, now Allen has to get his emotions in check because he just said something to RJ Cole. He did not want to get a technical foul in the situation. And you see his teammates and you see the, the official right now is showing great restraint. Obviously, Allen said something that he shouldn't have to R.J. Cole. An official does not want to jump in and call a technical foul right here. I love the restraint that the official is showing. Allen has to get the emotions in check. Dial it down slightly. I understand you're this close to doing something that a lot of people didn't think you could do, but don't let your emotions get you out of your zone that you're in. Focus on this free throw. Nine for nine from the stripe. Two possession game with 27 and a half to go. 66 60 Aggies. 66 to 60 with 27 and a half seconds to go. As the offensive show of the night's come from Teddy Allen, who's lucky he didn't get a technical on the last situation. The official showed. Maybe more restraint than necessary. Great restraint. But I like that though. Official did not want to make this game about him. Right. RJ Cole taking it coast to coast to kick out. Three pointer. They need goes. it. They need it. Martin knocks it down. Still just a three point game. Listen, if you're UConn right here, anybody but Allen gets his ball. Because we know it's going to be a free throw game going down the stretch. New Mexico State's going to have to knock down their free throws and play good defense. But if I'm UConn, after we see this great drive by Cole getting right to the basket, finding his man Martin in the corner for three, three ball corner pocket. But on the defensive side of things, I'm putting two guys on Teddy Allen. I'm not letting that guy go to the free throw line. He's nine for nine. He's clutch. He's not even thinking about it. And the ball is all net every single time. Somebody else has to hit these free throws if I'm UConn. The next best free throw shooter on their team would be Jabari Rice and maybe Clayton Henry next in line. But nobody else, partner, if you can believe this, has shot a free throw or made a free throw for the Aggies tonight except zero, Teddy Allen. Well, I can believe it because he's been the most aggressive by far. And that's part of the reason why I don't want him going to the free throw line right now. 
And it's also the reason you don't want somebody else doing it because they haven't been there yet. Exactly. And the pressure is on right now, man. Yeah, if you're the Aggies, you don't you don't want anybody but Allen getting that ball on the flip side. If you're UConn, it's anybody but Allen. Teddy Allen has scored the last 11 points for New Mexico State. And his coach, I think, Chris Jan saying, okay, let's keep our cool guys. We're 19 seconds away from advancing. And we're three points up. Well, this is 19 seconds left. A lot of time left in this ball game. Yep. So they got two guys, McKinney and Teddy Allen on the baseline. Now McKinney gets it into Allen. He draws a crowd and a quick foul took about a second. And we see that a lot now in college basketball where they line up all across the baseline and that kind of basic they do that basically so you take away the double team that I was talking about it makes it really really easy to get the ball to your best free throw shooter. it's almost like a football route you tell everybody yep. else go on a go route you you run a quick button hook Johnny McCants is going to check back in that's the 10th UConn foul so it's two free throws coming up for a guy that hasn't missed any yet money right there 34 points. Looking for number 35. Got it. And it's a two possession ball game. UConn can still get it too. They're going to have to hustle. Have to get the ball in bounds first. And now it's RJ Cole who will bring it. Runs into a double team, has to give it up. Wow, that's Holly not, just that, that's lets not it. go. That is not it. And wow. that might start to do it. And the dance, Teddy Allen's coming over here in the front court, doing a little dance in front of us. Now he'll go back to help out on the inbound play. There's 7.9 to go. He gets it on the inbound. He's fouled again. And he's coming right back to look at the favorite. He's giving us, oh, okay, a little cabbage patch, a little old school. That is old school. Yeah. I could almost do that. You didn't, use, you, you didn't used to do that back in the day? Uh, I'd go farther back in the day than that. Oh, bro. okay. <laughs> hey, we're going to get that camera over here if you pull out the cabbage patch. Where's our cameraman at? Uh, well, we had a 12 beat a 5 earlier today here. And we're about to have another. And again, the officials having a chat with Teddy Allen about uh, showboating. Yeah, about showing up their opponent. And that's 12 a, for 12. That's a very, once again, that's a very good job by the official. You know how emotions run high late in these ball games. UConn's a very proud team. You want to calm Allen down a little bit. You don't want anything to pop off these last six seconds. Right. It'll be a tough ending for R.J. Cole and company. But when you got a guy that can shoot like this, you're going to have troubles if you can't score and they couldn't score enough. As Cole lets fly on maybe his last shot as a Husky, New Mexico State's Aggies have won it at a number 12 over a number five for the second time today in Buffalo. And what a performance by that guy that's in the embrace of his teammates. This is what it's all about. March Madness, these moments. And then on the flip side, you see the agony, the joy, the, the adulation from New Mexico State on the when you look at UConn over there, just the disappointment of a season coming to a crashing hole. 37 points for Teddy Allen, who missed his first <laughs> few shots. He's even hugging Evan Washburn. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Let's go, guys. Take it away. Bye-bye, Blue Bloods. Bye-bye. Teddy, this was an incredible game, 37 points. Also seemed emotionally charged. What's going through your mind right now as you just advance in the tournament? Hey, that's like New Mexico State's first NCAA tournament dub in like 70, you know, since 1970. You know what I'm saying? Just happy that we got the dub. What was your mentality? Because it was a little bit of a slow start, but then you seemed to lock in and take nah, this game over. Not slow start. I just had to find, get in where I fit in. You know what I'm saying? That's, it never rattles me. My teammates kept looking for me, telling me to shoot it. 
That's all you can ask for. A team that believes in you, a coach that believes in you, and you see what happens. What kind of run can this team make? Hey, we just going to play. We going to show up and play. If you want to send us home, you got to send us home. Living up to Teddy Buckets. Enjoy yes, it, man. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> well, his interview style is just about like his offensive style, I guess. <laughs> Teddy Allen, 37 points tonight in a 70 to 63 win. So here's how the bracket looks. New Mexico State advances. They'll take on the winner of our nightcap tonight, Arkansas and Vermont here in the West region. And Gonzaga and Memphis have already advanced. Tournament games continue now on CBS, TBS, and True TV. Coming up on TNT, it's Vermont and Arkansas. That's where we'll be, right here in Buffalo. We'll send you to our studio for Capital One Tournament Central. Coming up right after these messages. It was a night for Teddy Buckets and the Aggies. Rock solid in Buffalo.